All right, guys, for the sake of time, uh, I'm going to just kind of talk over this as we're going. Um, since everything I'm doing on this episode is pretty much basic maintenance type level of work, but this way we can kind of discuss on the the parts and stuff that I'm putting on this thing. So um, right now I'm taking the lifting bracket off the engine. Uh, I am going to leave this off because it you have to take it off every time you need the fuel rail off, which is to do spark plugs, to do coils, to do injectors or anything like that. Um, and and the only time I need it is if I'm pulling the engine. So um, we will just put that on there if we need it on there. Otherwise, uh, it's going to just stay off of there for now. Um, okay, so we are replacing the injectors with uh, the Dietz work, Deutsch work. I don't know how you actually are supposed to say that. We'll call them DW, 60-pound uh, injectors on this. Uh, the part number is in the link below. Uh, you'll get to see... Uh, if those are the right injector or not, uh, when we go to dyno tune it, uh, they're probably going to be pretty close. So um, the coil packs on this car are from AC Delco. Uh, I originally had MSDs. When I very first got the car, I put MSDs in it. Um, and it then developed a misfire. So um, one of the coils actually went bad. And so I took them out and replaced them with these AC Delcos, which have actually been pretty good coils. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and reuse them. Uh, the coil that I just wiped off right there, that was uh, water had gotten in. So I need to do a better job of putting dielectric grease around the, around the boot of it uh, as I put it in so that hopefully water won't uh, make its way down into that boot uh, there like that. So um I'm gapping my plugs at 44, which is basically factory. I'm not sure if I should be going up or down on gap or not uh, with the turbo stuff. So I'm just leaving them at 44 for now. And then we will uh, uh, go down that bridge if we need to. So I am replacing the plugs with a cool, colder plug. So they started off being a NGK 55, which is a 5.5. And uh, we're putting in an NG, NGK 7, uh, which is basically one and a half steps colder the the higher the number on ngks the colder they are so um we're we are using iridium plugs on this one so i'll put the part numbers to those in the description below uh in case you need to know which which those are um if we start running into detonation issues and stuff we may have to go to a colder plug uh but uh that should be cold enough so uh hopefully those are going to work out All right, I got the throttle body bolted up, and what I'm doing now is, uh, remember, in the last episode, we're, we are going to run a mass on this car, um, or at least I'm going to leave it there for the tuner if he wants to use it or not. Um, they're pretty useless once you get into high boost, but uh, he may want it for the lower boost situations. Um, but the wire was too short, so I unloomed the factory wiring, and I just pulled that wiring back up the harness, chased it up the harness a little ways, and then we're re-looming it. And I'm using a cloth tape. The factory used a, a you know, some sort of a, a rubber rubberized tape. I'm using a cloth tape, and then I like to hit it with a heat gun or a little blowtorch right afterwards, uh, and it, it makes it adhere so it doesn't actually ever peel. I haven't had one peel off uh, doing it that way yet. So, uh, it, and it kind of shrinks it up a little bit as well. So that works pretty good, uh, and it looks looks. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'd say nice, but it looks pretty factory. So the driver's side is similar, and you'll notice that I pushed in the adapter already for the fuel line uh, to, that, to adapt it to AN fitting. Um, I, I am going to address that at the end of the video here. That ends up being a mistake, um, and that was actually a light bulb moment for me pushing that in there um, that that made me think I realized I was making a mistake. So this side goes the same. Um, always blow these things out before you take the plugs out uh, and before you take the injectors out. Um, blow out around them first. You'll see me a couple times hitting those with an air gun. Um, the dirt obviously collects in those low points. And then as soon as you take out the injector or the spark plug, dirt then falls into your engine. So you, you want to make sure you blow all that out before you pull uh, whatever it is out that you're pulling out, uh, it, whether it be an injector or a spark plug on any of these modern engines where they're down in those recesses like that. Um, these, these four sixes, for some reason, uh, they get quite a bit of dirt down around the spark plugs um, and also around the injectors. That's a little more to be expected. But the, the boots on, on these things don't seal up quite as good as you'd think they would on the, uh, on the coil boots. Uh, so quite a bit of dirt ends up down around the spark plugs. So always blow those out before you pull the plug out.
All right, that was the last coil. So they're in. I remember dielectric grease on those. Uh, and so now what I'm doing is uh, applying the grease to the O-rings on the injectors. Um, they, that actually comes with the injectors uh, from, from Dietzworks. Um, yeah, so just uh, just apply that, uh, smear it around there, and it just allows you to assemble. They it, they assemble real easy if you use that grease on there, and you don't you don't have the potential of rolling uh, an O-ring off the injector and having a fuel leak. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually marking out the center of each of the rubber boots on our charge line of of our intake system um, because I'm going to put standoffs on the exhaust everywhere where I made the mark. Uh, eyeballing the appropriate angle of, of that so that we can actually clamp that intake tube to our standoffs right at the boot. Um, and that way, hopefully, we will get as little heat transfer as possible. Um, but it's a nice, easy way of actually mounting that system up. And here's how I made them. Uh, these are these are the little standoffs I made. I'm, I, I'm playing these in reverse order because it didn't really make much sense before. Um, but I that's a dimple die. <laughs> I just kind of repurposed it. Um, you can make one, just grind it or whatever out of flat or whatever, but it's just a little standoff, so I'll just tack it, um, and then that allows me to put a hose clamp around that uh, eighth-inch round bar, um, and then around the intake tube itself. So that, that's how I'm going to sand them off. So I'm just making a whole bar of them, and then I'll just cut them with a pair of dikes, and uh, then we tacked them on. So that was that. All right, guys, let's talk fuel system a little bit because I was going down the wrong path on fuel system uh, because uh, I watched a big box YouTube channel um, and that's what they did. And they may have had a sponsored part or maybe they, they had a limitation of some point where they had to do it this way. Um, but uh, the light bulb moment for me when I was pushing the adapter into the fuel rail uh, to go to AN, uh, that was the light bulb moment for me on why I was doing that. So um, I, I reached out to uh, my dyno tuner, uh, who you'll be seeing here soon um, in the next couple weeks. Um, and he, he agreed there, there's no reason to be doing that. No, we want to keep it pulse width, which is how the factory runs the fuel pump on this car. Um, and conveniently, the fuel lines on this car are actually pretty adequate sized for, for probably up to 600 horsepower. We're guessing. Um, but what's nice about leaving it um, pulse width is we're actually going to be able to see that limitation via the duty cycle of the fuel pump in the tuner. And actually a scanner can see that as well. Um, so we're going to upgrade our fuel pump to a 340 Aeromotive. Um, and that is compatible with pulse width, luckily, because I did not buy it uh, thinking we were doing pulse width or, or maintaining pulse width. Um, and then we're going to try to upgrade our factory fuel filter to this Aeromotive fuel filter. Um, I'm going to try to find some adapters. All that's going to be coming up in a future episode. Um, we will see you again on Monday uh, where we tackle oil system stuff. So uh, we're, I believe we're going to tackle oil system stuff on Monday um, or this weekend. Um, but it, it all depends on what I have. Um, if I have to order parts and stuff, I'll move on to something else or whatever. That's how basically this whole build's going. It's a little bit scattered all over the place and it's literally because I'm waiting on parts. Um, I'm ordering stuff as fast as I can as soon as I figure out what I need. Um, and then I'm waiting on the parts so I just do kind of what I can. So um, anyway, we'll see you on Monday. Thanks for watching. Remember, please hit like uh, and subscribe. I want to try to hit an algorithm with this build. I think this is going to be a really, really cool series between this Crown Vic and uh, the Caprice, which is going to be a old school build shooting for the same horsepower numbers at the rear end. And then we can kind of do a shoot off between the two of them, see which one is better or if they're equally cool. I don't know. We'll see.